the question about what batteries to get for your boat is not as simple as it might seem. Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today I'm sharing some of the background behind our recent decision to switch to lithium batteries. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by My Island Wi-Fi, your go-to source for secure Bahamas internet. Planning on a visit to the Bahamas and wanting the security of unlimited Wi-Fi? Look no further. Featuring monthly plans with no long-term commitment, My Island Wi-Fi offers unlimited 4G hotspot rentals with no hidden fees or throttling. Visit myislandwifi.com to reserve your device now. My Island Wi-Fi, vacation without limits. When I wanted to talk about our decision on lithium batteries, I realized that I needed to go into a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of detail about a boat electrical system. Because the boat's electrical system, and by definition thereby the batteries, they don't exist in a vacuum. Your batteries are a part of the larger whole electrical system, and I just wanted to touch on what some of those things were. Basically, you're looking at three things. You need supply, you need demand, and you need storage. And altogether, those make up your electrical system. So the supply are your charging sources. Generally, you're talking about an engine, a generator, maybe alternative power like solar or wind, and shore power if you're plugged in. Demand is the things that will use that electricity. So lights, fans, fridge, inverter to power the computer charger, your radio, stereo, if you're going with induction, all of those things are the things that will use electricity. Those are the things that you don't necessarily think about in a house, but actually you don't generally think about your electrical system as a whole in a house because somebody else handles it all. And the third part of your electrical system is storage. Because when you're out there, you're responsible for not only supplying your electricity, but you better store it unless you're planning on just always having the supply available at your fingertips. And on a boat, storage is done in batteries. And you probably need to think about the entire system as a harmonious whole. You need to size your batteries based on both the demand that you're going to have, but also the supply and where you're getting that power from. The first couple of things, the supply and the demand, are, are pretty straightforward. Because probably your boat comes with an engine, and then the rest of the stuff that you are doing to supply your electricity needs will be a combination of where you are and also the setup on your boat. And then as far as demand goes, you want to look at what you want to power and how much energy that takes. And then you may have to tweak and figure out whether you can meet that demand because you may be limited in terms of your budget and in terms of your boat real estate to put things like solar or wind and all kinds of other things. But really, my conversation today is talking about the storage aspect and more specifically talking about how we on Calypso decided on the storage system that we were going to use. Lead acid batteries are fairly common on boats. They're kind of batteries like the ones you have in your car. They come in both sealed and unsealed versions, and they're heavy, they're not particularly expensive, and as a very, very, very gross overgeneralization, they can put up with being discharged to about half of their rated capacity before starting to suffer damage. We've had 200 amp hours of AGMs for a number of years which means that we have about approximately 100 amp hours of usable power to meet the demand that we need. We, for a very long time, cruised with a smaller diesel engine that was hand cranked and we had a refrigerator that was an engine drive refrigerator. So basically the engine would cool the super, it would make like a super cold block of ice in there. But more to the point, when we were charging the fridge, it actually put enough of a load on the very small diesel that we have that we weren't horrifyingly 
destroying the engine by using it in that capacity. Since the fridge is our biggest power hog, when we didn't have to think about the refrigerator as part of our energy equation and battery equation, it meant that we had a few more options open to us. We've since installed a much larger diesel engine and we've taken away the engine drive refrigerator because the engine was no longer being put under sufficient load by when we needed to charge the fridge and we didn't want to waste and ruin the new engine by just using it to charge the fridge. So we have a new kind of a refrigerator and we've realized that 100 amp hours is just barely adequate for the demand that we have. And the combination therein made us really start having this conversation about what battery do we need. And as a side note, the batteries that we have on the boat right now are about six or seven years old anyway, and we would have to replace them in the first place before we head off cruising again. So it's not just that we had brand new batteries and said, oh gosh, we need to junk them all and start from scratch. No, we know that we need to replace batteries. And so that jump started this whole conversation. So one of the things to think about is, of course, capacity. 200 amp hours of AGMs gives us about 100 amp hours of usable capacity. We realized that we probably needed 300 amp hours because we need about 100, we were looking for about 150 amp hours of, of capacity. And so that means we needed three of them. These batteries that we've been buying run about $250 each. So $750 for three of them. Each one of those batteries weighs about 65 pounds. So about 195 pounds somewhere in there. And a little bit of space. And the space we can deal with, our boat is heavy and can handle the weight. So there you go. AGMs, 750 bucks, about, call it 200 pounds for 150 amp hours of usable capacity. Lithiums. We've heard a lot about lithium batteries. People rave particularly about their charging, discharging rates and the capabilities. Plus, hello, they weigh a whole lot less than those AGMs and they take up less space. The big, big, big drawback, besides the fact that they can explode, which is not minor, but the big, big thing with lithiums is that they're hugely expensive like about a thousand dollars a battery expensive. So if we were going for three of them, we'd be looking at about $3,000, four times the upfront cost. Yep, no, that's not gonna happen. Sorry, we can replace those batteries four times for the cost of one set of those batteries. And shelling out $3,000 upfront is just a little bit of a non-starter. We got a number of other things that have their claim on those boat dollars. Then Jeremy started watching Will Prowse on YouTube. Will Prowse is a solar energy guy who seems to have made it his life's mission to test absolutely every conceivable aspect of an alternative electrical system known to humanity. Okay, maybe not the engine, but he buys and tests solar panels, batteries, chargers, inverters, battery monitoring systems, and more. He spends a lot of time documenting this testing that he's doing and breaking things down in a very, very concrete way. Will, however, makes the case that if you're handy and electrical inclined, which really definitely defines Jeremy to a T, you can craft your own lithium battery from cells. Sure, the cells are not the only component that goes into a lithium battery. If you remember, I mentioned that exploding part, a battery monitoring system is really critical to help mitigate that particular risk. But Will argues that making your own lithium batteries is not impossible, nor that expensive. As compared to buying a 100 amp hour battery off the shelf, which costs about $1,000, a 100 amp hour homemade battery just for the cells 
costs about $500. Now, yes, there are a few other parts that go into that battery, but the cost of those is fairly negligible, and we can buy one battery monitoring system that works for the two batteries that we're buying. Conventional wisdom around lithiums is that you charge them to 90% of rated capacity and you discharge to about 10%, meaning that you have 80% of that battery capacity to use, which means that 200 amp hour lithium batteries, which weigh about 62 pounds total, will give us 180 amp hours of usable battery as opposed to three 100 amp hour AGMs where we'd get 150 amp hours for a weight of 195 pounds. This is starting to look a little bit more interesting to us because $1,000 versus $750, this math is starting to look a little bit more manageable. And then when you look at the biggie, which is the life spike the life cycle the lifespan of the different batteries it becomes a little more compelling so an agm those sealed batteries has a rough average lifespan of 500 cycles meaning you charge it up and you discharge it a lithium has an average lifespan of 3000 cycles for every lithium replacement set we'd be replacing the agms six times that's pretty compelling. But I have to say, I think the kicker for Jeremy was the idea of building his own. Yes, getting the finances to a way more reasonable level was certainly important. If we were willing to shell out $750 for new batteries, we can shell out $1,000 for new batteries. $750 versus $3,000, that's a little tougher. But I don't even think, though, if he could have bought drop-in lithiums for $1,000 for both of them, that he would have done it. He just likes projects. And particularly because a whole lot of people, when we mentioned that Jeremy was going to try and build his own, said, oh, no, you can't do that. Remember, there's that explode part. Besides, Jeremy got to build what looks like a bomb in our garage. He really loves that. (laughs) It's kind of fun. The combination of size, weight, price to something more reasonable, but also the number of cycles that these batteries can do. He's really excited about this project now. Don't forget, any boat decision is absolutely up to you. I wanted to share our reasoning for why we've decided to try this lithium thing, and we'll definitely share what happens later on down the line. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love it when you share it with your friends because the more the merrier. And that gives us more to talk about when we run into each other and share an anchor sometime down the line. Have a safe and healthy week. Slow.